Here is your no-nonsense recap of Attack on Titan Final Season Part 2. Please watch my Final Season Part 1 recap for Episodes 1 through 16. Please enjoy the video. As the Jaegerists with Hange under capture, they discover Levi's seemingly lifeless body and Zeke. Then a wild pure Titan comes from the woods and eats Zeke, which allows him to fully heal from all of his injuries. While this is happening, Hange uses this as a distraction to escape with the remaining chunks of Levi through the flowing stormy stream. Having no choice but to let them go, Zeke then tells Flock of a mysterious girl who he had visions of and the place she resides in called The Paths. Meanwhile, in Shinganshina, Marley arrives with backup and reunites Peek and Gabby with Magath and Colt, which Magath is extremely relieved to see Gabby is okay. Though, Gabby has important information she was able to deduce from Zeke. Their objective is simple. Aaron and Zeke are to make contact. So, now their new plan is to simply stop them from achieving their goal. This leads into a massive battle with Eren taking on both Reiner and Porco. Eren is able to gain the upper hand due to the Warhammer Titan's power until Magath uses an anti-Titan cannon, snipes Eren through the head from a top wall Maria. This allows Porco and Reiner to recover and for Marley to turn the tide against the Jaegerists. This leads into Onyan Kampone releasing the Survey Corps members imprisoned by Yelena and the Jaegerists to help them fight fight against Marley. He's able to convince them by revealing he had no clue about any euthanasia plan, and they are able to slowly piece together that they should help Eren due to him most likely lying to Mikasa and Armin about the Ackerman gene and Armin becoming part Barclophicus. That's an inside joke on the channel, by the way. We don't speak the name of the Elden Lord of Tall's name in these parts. Not anymore. As Mikasa doubts Eren's motives, the battle continues when, suddenly, Zeke arrives and standing atop Wall Maria, attacks and destroys Marley airships, turning the tide back in favor of the Jaegerists. Back with the Survey Corps, they force the Jaegerists to free the imprisoned Shadis and jailed soldiers. This is when Pixis offers to lead a group of soldiers who were tainted by wine to go out and attack Marley. While they prepare, Mikasa surprisingly takes off her scarf as the Jaegerist Lewis notices and takes it later on. Niall then is able to reunite Falco with Gabby and Colt, the latter who is armed with military's finest, an anti-Titan rifle. Though, as the Browse family passes the building they're hiding in, Gabby realizes that the Devils of Paradise she hated so much are actually nothing more than people just like her. She's finally realized the hatred she had and how wrong it was, and so Falco as well, seeing this, decides to confess his love for Gabby as he could turn at any moment. Colt, seeing this, decides it would be best to rush them to Zeke so he knows it won't accidentally turn Falco before they escape the shouting distance. As the War of Paradise rages on, however, Peek is able to fake her own death, which gives Magath a clear shot at Zeke's nape and takes it, toppling the beastly titan. This prompts Eren to start making his way to Zeke's fallen titan body. As he does this, the Jaw titan attacks. However, Eren is able to smite Porco to the ground, smashing Porco's nape and subsequently him. Magath tries to fire on Eren once more, but Flock and his men are able to distract and attack the cart titan. Meanwhile, Reiner now having Eren pinned, reaches out to Porco when he triggers Marcel's memories about Reiner. As this happens, it's revealed that Zeke is alive and prepares to scream. But Colt arrives and pleads with Zeke to let him and Falco escape first as he drank his spinal fluid wine. Reluctantly, Zeke apologizes to Colt and screams, turning everyone on Paradis who was tainted into a pure titan and scorching cold in the process. Zeke then orders Falco to eat Reiner, but instead he eats Porco, who proclaims in his dying breaths that he was always a better man than Reiner ever was. The Survey Corps then attack the cart and armor titan with thunder spears, which allows Eren to then reach Zeke. However, the vengeful Gabby Braun brandishes her rifle taken from Colt and takes aim, firing and decapitating Eren. His head hits Zeke just before he dies, and there they are transported to 
the paths. There he meets Zeke, who is chained down by King Fritz's vow renouncing war, and a little girl, the founding titan herself, Founder Ymir. Approaching them from the coordinate, Aaron states he actually never trusted or meant to follow Zeke's plan and goes to command Ymir. However, it's revealed that Ymir can only follow orders from those with royal blood. This allows Zeke to de-chain himself and in turn shackle Aaron to the sand. Zeke then decides to relive Aaron's memories of himself and Grisha to convince him to follow his plan. However, the opposite occurs as Zeke witnesses Grisha's memories and they find out that Grisha had foregone his duty as an Eldian and instead allowed Aaron to do what he wanted in life. Aaron then tells Zeke that he should have never thought that they were the same as Aaron was born free, while Zeke is still unable to cope and move past Grisha and his lofty ideals. Though still stubborn says he will still go about his plan until it's revealed to Zeke that he was talking to Aaron all along, even before he became the attack and founding titan. As they witness Grisha confront Sister Frida, it's shown that the driving motivator to have Grisha consume the founding titan was actually Aaron himself. Grisha then breaks down and sees Zeke, who then warns him that Aaron's goal will be the one to come true, not his. He then holds Zeke and apologizes as he regrets everything that he did to him as a child. This pretty much incapacitates him as Grisha pleads to Zeke to get him to stop Eren. After delving into Grisha's memories, Zeke is horrified to discover that Eren had deliberately influenced Grisha's actions in order to gain control of the Founding Titan and shape the future. Despite Zeke's attempts to initiate the euthanasian plan through Ymir, Eren breaks free from his chains to pursue Ymir towards the coordinate. Meanwhile, a flashback reveals Ymir's origins as the first Titan, created after being hunted down for a minor mistake and transformed by a parasitic entity. Over time, Ymir's powers were exploited by Fritz and his descendants, with her soul being trapped into paths for 2,000 years. In the present, Eren offers Ymir the freedom to choose and she aligns with him, resulting in the release of thousands of wall titans and the beginning of the rumbling. While some characters are relieved that Eren is not working with Zeke, others realize that the scale of the attack is far greater than necessary to defend Paradise Island. Eren uses his power as the founding titan to telepathically declare his intentions to destroy all life beyond the island. Eren leads the Wall Titans in a destructive march towards the rest of the world, while Reiner and Gabby search for Falco and Reiner is injured protecting her. Despite Reiner's discouragement, Gabby is determined to stop Eren. Meanwhile, pure titans created by Zeke wreak havoc in Shinganshina. Connie plans to feed Falco to his mother to turn her human again, while Gabby saves Kaya and Nicolo protects her from the Survey Corps. Armin, Mikasa, John, and Shaddis rally the remaining Jaegerists and cadets to fight the pure titans, eventually succeeding with the help of Lois. Onyan Capone and Yelena witness the rumbling with confusion, while Flock returns to punish the volunteers. Armin and Mikasa meet with Gabby, who urges Armin to convince Eren that not everyone deserves to die. Armin realizes that Eren has commanded all titan hardening to be undone, including Annie's Crystal. I want to take a moment to share with all of you my very own anime podcast. Every week we cover new anime series like Vinland Saga Season 2, Attack on Titan Final Season, Trigun Stampede, and so much more other hype and new anime content. At 500 subscribers, we'll be switching over to face cams, so please help a fella out. Fella. Or feller. Miss? Whoever is watching, please help. The Wall Titans march towards the horizon as the Tross District inhabitants debate the human toll and destruction caused by Eren's rumbling strategy. Hitch locates a feeble Annie who has been released from her crystal and aids her in escaping the military police. Annie confesses to Hitch that she no longer desires to fight and wishes to reunite with her adoptive father and Marley. Despite his abusive treatment and upbringing of her as a warrior, he regretfully admitted to not treating her like a daughter. 
In Liberio, Mr. Leonhart and his Eldian group attempt to persuade the Marlian guards about the imminent threat of the rumbling, but are met with resistance, culminating in Leonhart resorting to physical altercation. Meanwhile, Shaddis predicts the Jaegerist will take control of the island and anticipates his own purging. He advises the cadets to follow them for the time being. Armin readies himself to pursue Connie and Falco with Gabby, expressing frustration with Mikasa for her concern for Eren, whom he believes is a lost cause. However, he later apologizes and acknowledges that Erwin should have been resurrected in his place. Mikasa notices her scarf is now missing. Elsewhere, Flock discloses that Eren revealed his plan to him 10 months ago and that he always knew Eren would manipulate Zeke. With the Jaegerists' support, Flock confronts the volunteers, presenting with the ultimatum of submitting to the new Eldian Empire or facing death, as demonstrated by the shooting of one of their members. He then attempts to persuade a shaken John and Mikasa to abandon their fight and retire as heroes of Paradis, invoking the deaths of Hanj and Levi. Falco wakes up, having lost his memory of the recent battle, and appears uneasy about Connie. Then, in the end credits, Peek and Magath discuss the rumbling when Hanj arrives with the severely injured Levi. Finally, in the post credit scene, the audience sees the wall in ruins as Peek and Magath converse with Hanj while she accompanies the wounded Levi. As the sun sets on the departing wall titans, the Trost district is torn between the lives lost and devastation caused by Eren's rumbling strategy. Hanj leads the charge against the pursuing Jaegerists and sets up camp in the woods to tend to Levi's wounds. A message from Eren to the Eldians reaches them as they come across Peek and Magath. Hanj and Levi propose an alliance with them to take down Zeke. Meanwhile, Connie arrives in Ragako village with Falco, intending to feed him to his Titan mother. Armin and Gabby eventually do intervene, and Connie has a change of heart. They all then return to Shiganshina, where Annie joins their group after abandoning Hitch. Mikasa refuses to join the Jaegerists and recovers her scar from Lois. Flock orders the execution of Yelena and Onyan Capone, but Peak's Cart Titan saves them from certain death. As they all join forces, Annie notices someone watching them from a window. With supplies in hand, they set off to save the world, meeting up with Reiner along the way. John imagines a future where he can live a peaceful and content life with his family. However, his reverie is broken when Hanj approaches him and Mikasa, imploring them to join forces with the remaining Survey Corps and Marlians to prevent Eren's planned genocide. Initially hesitant, John ultimately agrees to help after being reminded of his fallen comrade, Marco. At their camp in the forest, the Survey Corps and Marlians clash with Magath over the origins of the conflict, sparking a heated debate about who the real devils are. Meanwhile, Annie challenges Mikasa on whether she could bring herself to kill Eren if she fails to persuade him to end the rumbling. Though they are on the brink of a fight, they resolve to approach Eren before taking more drastic measures. As they discuss their options over a meal of Hanji stew, they consider the flying boat as a potential means of reaching the founding titan. However, they are uncertain of Eren's exact locations. Yelena asserts that she has no knowledge of his whereabouts, but Magath and Peek reveal that she is a Marlian who had posed as an Eldian to infiltrate Zeke's group. Yelena forces the group to confront their own actions and motivations for saving the world, including Reiner and Annie's role in Marco's death, which prevented the warrior's exposure. John becomes enraged at Reiner's self-pity and brutally attacks him, but the others intervene. Gabby pleads with John for help in rescuing her family and Marley, but he storms off. The following morning, John returns and apologizes to Gabby before agreeing to join their alliance. However, he admits that he is still unable to forgive Reiner. Peek scouts ahead and discovers that the Jaegerists have taken over the port, with Flock holding Kiyomi Azumabito hostage. As Hanj and Magath observe the occupied port, they notice that the flying boat is still intact. 
but it is at risk of being destroyed by the Jaegerists at any moment. The massive amount of steam indicates that the Wall Titans have already crossed the sea, so the group needs to act quickly. They realize that the Azumabito engineers are required to service and prepare the boat for flight, but protecting them from the Jaegerists, even by wiping them out, is a dilemma that Connie opposes. Reiner and Annie come to the conclusion that battling their former comrades in the Survey Corps is not the solution. Meanwhile, McGath resorts to torturing Yelena to extract information about Aaron's whereabouts. Yelena agrees to talk only if the group takes her with them. McGath has a change of heart and apologizes to the Survey Corps for burdening them with the past. He asks them to overlook the bloodshed temporarily, but Armin refuses, believing in a peaceful solution. The engineers break the devastating news to Hanja's group that the flying boat won't be ready for at least 12 hours, forcing them to come up with a new plan to save Liberio from the Wall Titans. Kiyomi suggests taking the ship to Odaya, a Marleyan coastal city where the Azumabito own a hangar. However, their escape is hindered by the Jaegerists who are determined to stomp them. Annie and Reiner step up to defend the group by transforming into Titans while Mikasa, Hanj, John, and Connie fight alongside them. Seeing the Titans struggling, Falco musters up the courage to join the fray, while Peek jumps in after delivering Levi, Gabby, Yelena, and Onyanyu Capone to McGath. Just when it seems like all is lost, Hanj spawns a train of Jaegerist reinforcements that suddenly explodes and derails, followed by Falco charging into the chaos by transforming into the Jaw Titan. Flock tries to destroy the ship's hull with a thunder spear, but is shot down by Gabby and falls into the sea. Falco loses control and tries to eat Peak, but McGath manages to extract him from his Titan. The group eventually spots a captured Marleyan cruiser at the shore, and McGath decides to stay behind to destroy it, accompanied by Shaddis, who had followed them to the port and taken out the train. In a moment of mutual respect, the two men destroy the cruiser, sacrificing their own lives to save the world, while the rest of the group sells off to Odaya. Hanj then delivers the heartbreaking news that Marley and Liberio cannot be saved, causing Annie to feel obviously distressed. After being persuaded to stay, Annie questions Mikasa once again, whether she can let Eren be killed to stop the rumbling, confessing that she's exhausted from all of the violence. Several months before the assault on Liberio, the scouts arrived on the Marley shoreline. On their way to visit Azumabito at her home, they witnessed the persecution received by subjects of Ymir first and after rescuing a young thief named Ramsey from a mob of Marleyans. Azumabito informs the group that Marley has begun cracking down on subjects of Ymir who escaped their internment camps through use of blood tests. Hanj hopes to forge peace by allying with the subjects of Ymir Protection Group. Discovering that Eren has gone missing, Mikasa tracks him down to Ramsey's home. Eren questions Mikasa's loyalty to him, asking what he means to her, to which she is taken aback and calls him her family. The rest of the group catches up and they spend the night partying with Ramsey's family. The next day at the Protection Group's assembly, the representative of the Protection Group declares that the subjects of Ymir, who don't view themselves as Eldians, should be freed while the Devils of Paradis should be exterminated, which receives cheers from the audience. Seeing this and feeling deeply dejected, Eren departs and doesn't contact the scouts again until the assault on Liberio. Mikasa then ruminates on that time and wonders if different choices had been made, could things have turned out differently? Flashbacks reveal Eren meeting Yelena and agreeing to follow Zeke's euthanasia plan while actually informing Flock and Historia of his real plans, with the latter against his plan and deciding to get pregnant in an attempt to stop him, and Zeke telling him that Ackermans are not compelled by blood to protect a host and that Mikasa is devoted to him simply because she loves him. Eren tells Zeke that he wants his friends to live long, happy lives after his death. In the present, the Global Alliance makes a futile attempt with their navy to stop Eren and the Rumbling from reaching Marley. They are easily destroyed by the Titans, and Eren declares his intentions to destroy the world as he and the Colossal Titans set foot on the mainland. Here is a link to all of my episode analysis for Attack on Titan. I'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.